Hey class, how's it going? Uh, as promised, question 19 from test number two, strip footing calculation review. I'm going to go quickly. All right, you're going to go back, maybe watch this video, pause it in a few spots, pull out your code book, open it up, see where I'm getting this information from. I'm going to try and shoot this in one video, so we're going to go quickly. All right, so get your code books, page 96, open, and then page 98, open, ready to go, follow along. Okay. The question told us that we had a two-story wood-framed house. That's important. Extrapolate that information, especially this and especially that. Wood frame construction. It's got brick on the first story. That's important stuff to know because we're going to have to add on for the brick. The brick weighs a lot. If you look right underneath the table, 915.3.4, where we get our footing sizes for exterior walls, interior walls, and columns, we're on exterior strip footings in the first box of the, the, uh, the table. Underneath, it's going to tell you about the add-ons for masonry veneer, block construction, concrete construction. Supported joist length of 17 foot 6. See, this is what our actual joist length is going to be. In order to be in the table, we have to be 16 foot 1. Our joists are too long. Likely in this scenario, an engineered floor joist was used because typically, 16 foot 1 inches will satisfy anything we're doing with spruce, pine, and fir. Okay? We don't usually stretch them out that far. The next one was that our foundation was a block construction and it had to support uh, 5 foot 11. 5 foot 11 again is, if this is your foundation or your footing, my apologies, and this is your foundation, right? And this is your basement floor slab. That's your slab. From the top of your slab to the top of the grade outside. It's kind of weird. We've got to go from inside to outside. If we were to draw a line through, 5 foot 11 is that distance. Your foundation wall may carry on up above that a couple of feet, but it's holding back this earth pressure. And that's where the 5 foot 11 comes in. Those are the key points from question 19 that you've got to pull out. You've got to extrapolate information. Doesn't matter what color the house is, doesn't matter anything else. The fact that the siding on the second story was wood, it's nice to know, but wood siding, vinyl siding, aluminum siding, um, EFIS, uh, exterior siding finishes, the stucco, it doesn't count for weight. It has weight, but not like brick. Brick has weight. Moving over here, Ontario Building Code, page 96, table 915.3.4, we find the two-story Minimum strip footing for exterior walls is 13 and 3 quarter inches or 350 millimeters. The first thing we have to do is deal with the fact that we broke a rule. We got a joist that's too long, 17 foot 6, 16 foot 1. So I'm going to take my actual of 17.5 feet and divide that by my allowable 16 foot 1 both converted into feet, got rid of the, the inches, that's going to give me 1.08 bigger thans. They really don't have any unit, it's just a proportion. How, how far uh, longer were our joists than they were allowed to be? 1.08. What I want to do is I want to take my base footing size now and bring it down 13.75 inches, multiply that by my 1.08 bigger thans, and that's going to give me a new base footing size of 14.85 inches, okay? Roughly 14 and 7 eighths inches. But I'm not done. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pull out this information here. One story of brick veneer is on the house. If you look at the notes just below the table 915, you'll see that for each story of masonry veneer we have to add 2 and 5 eighths inches. Two and five eighths inches. We're going to add it. 14.85 plus 2.625, two and five eighths as a decimal form, inches. That's going to give me 17.475 inches or 17 and one half inch wide footing. We now have the width of the footing. What we have to do now is come up with the thickness of the footing. The thickness of the footing 
is going to be equal to the projection of the footing past the foundation wall. So if we quickly draw this out, this is our footing. We now know that our footing is 17 and a half inches wide. We know that we're going to put a foundation wall on top of it. And the foundation wall is going to be centered. This is the projection. This is the thickness. They need to equal one another. We also know that the thickness can't be less than four inches according to code. So here's the question mark. How wide is the foundation wall? If we go back, this is where this five foot 11 inches comes into play. And the fact that it's unreinforced unit masonry. You're already on page 96 in your code book. Flip one more page. Find the table that says unreinforced unit masonry. Now we've got or concrete. You're going to go down to the bottom. You've got a couple rows to choose from. The next thing you need to figure out is, is the foundation wall laterally supported at the top or not laterally supported at the top. If you go back to the question, it says that there is a sill plate anchored to the top of a block foundation wall. If it has a sill plate anchored to the top of the foundation wall, then the foundation wall is laterally supported whether or not the joists run perpendicular or parallel to the foundation wall. So the foundation wall that you're looking for is unit masonry construction. It is laterally supported at the top. It has to hold up 5 foot 11. And if you go to your chart, you're going to find that you have a 9 and a half inch thick foundation wall. So projection past and thickness. 9.5 inches, right, is our foundation wall thickness. 17.5 inches is the width of our footing. We're going to subtract those two and hit equal, all right? And we're going to end up with what? Work it out. Work it out. It's hard when you're using your phone. Touch screen has messed you up. It's going to give us 8 inches. Okay? 8 inches is our thickness, but that, that's not the, the end of the answer because the foundation wall needs to be centered. We're going to take this 8, we're going to divide it by 2, and that's going to equal 4 inches. So our projection on this side, 4 inches, 9.5 inches, four inches, if you go four, four, and nine and a half, add them up, they're going to equal 17 and a half inches. Projection is four inches, thickness is also four inches, which is the same as the Ontario Building Code minimum. That's it. That's question 19, all wrapped up. We take all of the information from the question, two-story wood frame home, brick on the first floor, joists are sitting at 17 and a half feet, foundation wall is block with a sill plate anchored to the top, and it has to hold up five foot 11's worth of dirt pressure. All of that information will be able to give you this footing width, this footing thickness, all right? This is important for you guys as renovators to know because you're going to be verifying whether or not the existing footings on a house are going to be wide enough to hold up the second story. So you can't always default to the fact that this information will be given to you on the drawings. Sometimes we have to find it out for the homeowner to see if their dreams for their existing house will go. All right, we'll touch base with you again next review session. Cheers.